HS50. that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue for the reading now.
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 11. John 11. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly, and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it 
that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees, and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You sing a commandment a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
Thank you. Welcome to Togo, sir. Praise the Lord. Abundant life, I said, praise the Lord. Today, the crusade begins in Lume, Togo. And all over the world, there's going to be miracle, salvation, change of life, eternal life, abundant life, joy, healing, blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk supernatural power from heaven will come upon your life today you will give your testimony father we thank you we bless your name what a great mighty god you are and you have brought us to togo at this time so that power from heaven miracle from heaven supernatural things you will do from heaven prodigious things that will do we're asking lord that today you begin the manifestation in every life and i pray during the message your word will enter every heart Turn every life around and then the power for miracle will de be, be deposited in every life and everyone here will be connected with that abundant life thank you lord it is done in jesus name i pray God bless everyone. You can sit down. Tonight, at this first day, be expectant. While you are hearing the message, be prepared because something good is going to happen in your life. I'm going to take the message from John chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 9. John chapter 10. We're reading from verse 9. It says, I am the door. When you are going to enter into any building, there is a door. When you are going to enter into any supermarket to get anything, there is a door. And as you come, and you are going to enter into the abundant life, blessings of God, the door is Jesus Christ. That's why it says, I am the door. He didn't say, I was the door. He didn't say, I will be the door. Today, in your life, today, in your family today as you are seeking for the blessing of god jesus is the door is the door to salvation is the door to forgiveness 
is the door to freedom is the door to eternal life is the door to miracle is the door to healing he is the door to the supernatural now when you want to enter a door whether you are young or you are older you are a man or you are a woman very easy for everyone look at the door see the door open and then you enter and i'm telling you tonight you will enter you'll enter and find salvation you'll enter and find abundant life you'll enter into miracle remember remember i am the door by me if any man enter in jesus said by him and him alone and he says any man can enter you will enter you will enter if any man enter in he shall be saved salvation comes to you today and as you enter you will be saved tonight and he shall go in and out and find a pastor everything you are seeking for tonight you will find look at verse verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy then he said i am come he has come jesus savior lord the one that has all power on earth and in heaven he has come he has come to you in lume right now all over the world anywhere you are christ the savior is come he said i am come that they might have life he wants you to have life eternal life abundant life and then he said that they may have it more abundantly that's why as we're here tonight there is no shadow of doubt in my heart you will have life eternal life abundant life you will have the life of christ in you tonight he says i am come that they not only one person they all of us over there that they all of us in the media that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly and then in verse 11 it says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep that's what we are talking about tonight divine provision for everyone's abundant life christ has made a provision for you for me for us for everyone divine provision for everyone's abundant life i'm going to explain to you in three points one two three prayer final amen miracle in your life number one 
He's coming with abundant life. That's, that's what he just told us. I am come that they might have life. Number one, he's coming with abundant life. Why did he come? Because there was the seed that sucked in everybody. And he put everyone in a cage. And when you put a bird, a chicken, when you put them in a cage, you want to, when you are hungry, you want to take them out of the cage, slaughter them, kill them, eat them up. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. That's, that's the devil. He put everyone in a cage. He stole our hearts, our life from God. And we yielded surrender unto him. And he put everyone in a cage. So that the life of everyone in the cage will be abated aborted destroyed and then somebody it from the hands of god it becomes a nobody in the hands of satan the cage of the abated life but thank god christ has come and as christ comes he calls us and when you respond to the call, you come out of the cage of Satan. You come out of the cage of evil spirit. You come out of the cage of demonic power. And then Christ brings you to himself. As you come tonight, everything the devil has done in your life, Christ will cancel. Number three is called to the abounding life. When the world calls you, they call you into trouble. When Satan calls you, he calls you to destruction. When a secret cult calls you, they call you into bondage. But there is just one call. The call by Christ will bring you to the abounding life. Congratulations tonight. Because you come into Christ's abounding life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one is coming with abundant life. Christ has come and he comes with abundant life. Look at John chapter 10 again and look at verse 10. In the middle there he says, I am come that they might have life. There's a kind of life that the world cannot give. Eternal life, happy life, righteous life, a release life, a life from heaven, the life like the life of Christ, the life that takes every negative sin and takes judgment away from your life, the life from heaven. The kind of life that the world cannot give. The kind of joy that the world cannot give. The kind of victory that the world cannot give. The life of power that the world cannot give. 
anywhere you go in the world and you want a life of victory a life of happiness a life of joy a life that is fulfilled a life that is accomplished the world cannot give that but Christ said I am calm I am calm today you are going to have new life the life you've been dreaming about can I be like that can I be like that the only one that can give you that kind of life Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior he says I am calm that they might have life and then after giving you that initial salvation and he gives you that eternal life and he gives you that change of life because once you come to Christ you become a new creature with a new life old things are passed away and all things become new a new joy a new happiness a new victory a new dream a new desire a new achievement if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away old suffering passed away old sickness passed away old evil passed away and then he says when you have life don't stop there there is still the more abundant life we get saved we also get sanctified more abundant life we get healed we also have health more abundant life we have the initial conversion and then we have a higher conduct in life we have life we have the more abundant life tonight it's all available for you because he came I want you to look at first Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 in first Timothy chapter 1 reading from verse 15 he said this is a faithful saying this is a saying full of faith this is a faithful saying this is an expected saying for everyone it says and it is worthy of all acceptation it says this saying now is the normal saying everybody should accept acceptation all acceptation that everyone everywhere should accept this that everyone here Lume here you are hearing me now everyone in our country everyone in our continent everyone everywhere accept this And he says it's a faithful saying that word faithful is connected with god god the faithful god that what faithful is connected with christ he said i am the amen and the faithful he said this this faithful saying extends to the very nature and the life of god and then everyone should accept this 
anyone who believes in God, anyone that knows that God is, anyone that knows that Christ will never fail, that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever should accept this sin faithful like you accept Christ. What is the saying that extends to the very life of God that remains and abides as long as God lives that remains and abides as long as Christ lives this is the saying that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners some people say I cannot come to Christ now I'm terrible as a sinner that's not good reasoning Christ came to save sinners he came because of you he came because of her he came because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Christ came for you say Christ came for me say it again if you are deep in the well of sin if all your life from head to toe had been poisoned and polluted by sin If your language is the language of sin. If your action is the action of sin. If your life is full of evil. Life is full of evil. Christ came because of you. You know those people you know those people that say when I become better I will come to Christ. They are like people who say I am sick. I cannot go to the doctor now. When I become better I'll go to the doctor. Even your little child will say you mama how are you saying that even your little boy will say papa how can you say that it is when you are sick you go to the doctor when not when you are well and become better then you go to the doctor no why why you are still a sinner and you feel the guilt and you feel the condemnation and you feel the pain of what you have done and you experience the bondage of your sin that is when you come to Christ because this is a faithful saying and it is worthy of all acceptation that everybody all should accept that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners somebody said I am ignorant I know nothing when I improve when I improve and I have knowledge then I will go to school everybody will say but no when you know nothing when you are ignorant when you have no knowledge 
that's the time to go to so, school. Don't say I'll become better. I'll turn over a new leaf. I'll make myself righteous. I will do this and do this and do that. Become a good boy, a good girl, a good man, a good woman. Then I will go to Christ. No, no, no. As you are a sinner, dirty, a sinner, guilty, a sinner in the well of sin. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And then Paul the Apostle said, Of whom I am chief. Oh, some, some leaders of groups of sinners, they say, I want salvation, but I cannot be saved. Because I am the head of the gang. I am the leader of the sinner. I am the one corrupting, I am the one corrupting other people to become evil and sinful. So they say my subordinates can go. The little, little ones can go. But I I am the head. I am the chief. I'm the director. I am the sponsor of those bad people. So I cannot come. You can come. Christ came for everyone. And Paul the apostle said, Of whom I am chief. And yet he came. So you come. He comes. And she comes. And whosoever comes to him, he will in no wise reject. You are coming. I said you are coming. For salvation, you are coming. For deliverance, you are coming. For eternal life, you are coming. For a new life in Christ, you are coming. He is coming with abundant life you will get it today am i talking to somebody there where are you you will have eternal life tonight in jesus name hey, look at look at my point number two here the cage of the abated life. Now, there is another personality. He doesn't have freedom. He doesn't have life. He's connected with death and sorrow and suffering. And that's why Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Everyone Satan wants to destroy, he puts inside the cage. And when he puts them inside the cage, he goes up and down. He goes to and fro on the whole earth to search for other captives he will put in the cage. And because he has put them in the cage and he wants to go away from that cage to look for other people to put in the cage. He has to lock the cage so that those captives 
so that those people with aborted lives, abated lives, they will not go out of the cage before he brings all that others into the cage. And when Satan locks the door, is the leader, the head, the master of all the demons. Is the master of all the sinners. And Satan doesn't give his spare key to any demon. He doesn't give his spare key to any man. He takes the master key away while he's looking for other people to bring in. The only one who can open that cage in his presence or in his absence is the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the, is the one that said, I have the key of death and hell. And so Jesus only is the one that can open that cage whether the devil is there looking or the devil is not there absent jesus has the key to open that cage for you tonight look look at proverbs chapter 5 verse 22 In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. And he shall be holding, shall be held, shall be bound, shall be tied up with the cords of his sin. When the devil takes a man or takes a woman, the sin in your life, the evil in your life, the dirty, dirty things in your life, the, the things that the devil makes into a cord and then ties your hand, ties your feet, ties your mind, ties everything in your life. And then when you are tied by the cords of your own sin, he puts you into the cage. That the reason Christ and Christ alone the one who can untie and lose the cord. And when Jesus says yes in your life, no demon, no devil can say no. Because why losing that person over there tied to the pole? Jesus said, if anybody asks you that question, if any demon asks that question, if any Satan, any devil asks that question, just say, the Lord has need of him. Tonight, the Lord has need of you. He wants to pour into your life, abundant life, he wants to point your life, eternal life. He wants to point to you, heavenly life. You're welcome. You're welcome. Say, I will come. And the Lord, and the Lord will receive you. In Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18, I'm looking at verse 2. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, 
saying Babylon the great is falling is falling and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit look at this and a cage a cage a cage of every unclean and hateful bird Babylon the whole of Babylon from the head to the toe Babylon in the day in the night Babylon at that time at this time is a cage and all the people of the world because of the courts of their sins that bound them Babylon has become a cage of every unclean and hateful bird and that Babylon is falling the fallen world the fallen people the evil sinful people they all belong to that cage and there's only one name from heaven given among men that can open that cage that can set free every captive there jesus the savior the healer the deliverer the redeemer you come out of the cage tonight i said you will come out of the cage tonight galatians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 in galatians chapter 5 verse 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest what are the things people do that brings them into the cage of the devil and anyone in that cage will have an aborted life life will not be as exciting as it should be as happy as it should be as joyful as, as it should be when the life is aborted and abated life will not have the quality of life it ought to have what are those things people do that makes them have aborted life abated life now now in this world at this time at the present time not for the not the for the olden days even at the time in which we live what are the things that abates people's lives aborts people's lives look at them look at them adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness look at verse 20 idolatry idolatry when somebody goes to a shrine to the forest or maybe in your home you have a corner there you make a shrine and you are worshipping idol you are going to have an aborted life and then it talks about witchcraft aborted life hatred aborted life variance emulations wrath strife anger fighting violence 
you have abated aborted life seditions heresies then in verse 21 envies the murders and drunkenness rebellions and such like of the which I tell you before as I also have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God the kingdom of God that's where you have abundant life the kingdom of God that's your heart that's what you have abounding life and those who do not enter into the kingdom of God they have aborted life abated life but today we're going to make a transfer the Lord will transfer you out of that useless life and bring you into the abundant life tonight in Jesus name <laughs> many many years ago I was going to a particular school and it was just just like going to school there wasn't real education there there wasn't any progress there nobody passed out of that school and then comes to live a good life an employed life an employable life we well, were just there as a young boy i loved the school why a, a lot of play a lot of you seen uh, color water uh, color water or something to paint and all i loved it but but my father saw that if i continued in that school i'll be nobody here in the world and he looked he looked for a school where they had real teaching learning and he took me out of that school i said why my friends are there the watercolor for coloring is there all the crayon for painting and drawing colorful things are there my father said you won't understand now but i'm transferring you out of this school to that school praise the lord i was transferred and i came to a real school if i wasn't transferred you will never have known me i will never have known you is the transfer of that time that got me to where i am now if you are not transferred out of that cage where you are now heaven will never know you you will never know joy you will never know happiness you will never know abundant life a better life praise the lord your transfer has come out of sin to the savior out of the abated abort aborted life to abundant life tonight out of sorrow into joy out of bad bad things into good good things because they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you coming? 
I said that you come into Christ. Remember, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you. He'll take your guilt away. He'll take your sorrow away. And then he'll transfer you out of darkness to his marvelous light. He's calling you now. And you will respond. He's calling you. And you will come. Point number three now. We're looking at his call to the abounding life. Is called to the abounding life. Abounding life has many composite members. <coughs> it's calling you to salvation. It's calling you to healing. It's calling you to deliverance. It's calling you to prosperity. It's calling you to a joyful, successful life. He, that's what he calls the abundant life. For your soul, for your spirit, for your body, for your education, for your progress, for life in entirety. He calls you. Thank God you're welcome. I say, thank God, you're welcome. When Christ called the blind man, he received his sight. When Christ called the sinner, because he, came, he said, I came to call sinners to repentance. He received salvation. When the poor is called by the Lord, he receives a joyful life provided for, sufficient to meet all his needs. And when Christ calls, he saves, he heals, he delivers, he protects. He gives the supernatural to everyone that responds to that call. His call to the abounding life. Uh, look at this, Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. He didn't say come unto Peter. Come unto John. Come unto Saint Augustine. No. He didn't say come unto the priest. A come unto Mary. No. Christ is the only Savior. Christ is the healer. And thank God the healer is in the house. And therefore he says, you want salvation? You want happy life? victorious life you want freedom and you want miracle you want the power that will hold you up to the abounding life come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest I will give you restoration. Restoration to the original life God wanted for every man, every woman. We lost that by the fall.
and he says come unto me all ye that labor and you are heavy lady and I will give you rest this is the faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that all the restlessness in our lives he will take away and he give you rest abundant life tonight eternal life tonight righteous life tonight forgiveness and freedom tonight your time has come look at verse 29 there take my yoke upon you when we were in the cage where the yoke of the one that put us in the cage he says remove that yoke all the covenant you made with that evil society renounce that yoke the habit of sinfulness break that yoke come out of that Turn away from your sin. Repent of every form of evil. And then take his yoke upon you. And learn of me. There's a lot you need to learn of Christ. That's why tonight is not the final night for you. You have life tonight eternal life tonight salvation tonight abundant life tonight and then you now continue to learn of christ it says for i am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls everyone that comes there's a restoration there's a rest there is the righteousness that he gives a redemption that he gives and he said as you come you'll not be searching and searching and searching you'll find rest restoration redemption unto your souls and then and then in Vastachi, for my yoke is easy it's when you try to live the life of abundant life without having the grace of god it becomes irksome difficult but when you have christ the yoke breaker in your life the one that sets free the one that gives you salvation and gives you restoration when you have that Christ in you my yoke is easy and my body is light the Lord is calling you I said the Lord is calling you I said the Lord is calling you and tonight you are going to have new life tonight you are going to have total freedom tonight you are going to have salvation and of course you are going to have healing you are going to have miracle as you come as you come they will do it for you amen Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. He has provided salvation. 
and is calling you to salvation faithful is he that calleth you calleth you calleth you is calling you right now who also will do it it's calling you to a better life a higher life a productive life it's calling you to that abundant eternal life and faithfully see that call at you who also will do it you hate that useless life of the past and then you hate all the dwindling life abated aborted life of the past see i want the life that comes from christ directly I want the life that comes from his death from Calvary. And now he grants me that free life, forgiven life, new life. I want that. I'm faithful. Faithful yesterday. Faithful today. Faithful tomorrow. His name is Amen. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. You see that call at you. Who also will do it. He's calling you now. You're welcome. And as you come, He will provide that life for you now. He'll turn your life around you will never be the same again a change will come a transformation will come as you come now as you come now reject darkness come to the light reject your sin come to the savior reject evil and come to the Lord tonight he will do it amen amen for you amen for everyone the Lord will do it now it's, it's bowed, it's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You have heard he's calling you. Your life in the past till today has been an aborted life, a beaten life. The Lord has come to you, providing a abundant abounding life for you and then he invites you and he says come and as you come salvation will come to you today you are receiving christ as your personal savior now and anyway you are in front of me here or somewhere over there online any country, every country, you've heard is calling you. You raise up your hand. You are saying, I want that abundant life. I want that new life. I want the life of Christ in me. Raise up that hand and say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Abundant life. Abundant life. He said, come unto me, all ye who labor on a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Anywhere, raise up that hand and come into that life right now. A change will happen. A transformation will happen. 
the joy of salvation will come to you and the peace of God will reign in your heart if you are raising up your hand God bless you there God bless you there God bless you there you're raising up your hand you stand up you identify yourself with the hand raised standing up thank you thank you quickly quickly stand up if you're raising up your hand you want life eternal life you want life forgiven life you want life a life that is set free a boy a girl a man a woman a church man a church woman with a christian name just raise up your hand and stand up and then that abundant life is coming as we're standing up open your mouth and tell the lord and say lord i come very simple i come i come out of babylon i come out of my sin i come out of all evil i repent i turn i will not go back to those things anymore and i come to christ my savior I come to Christ. He is my Lord from now on. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Faithfully see that call it you who also will do it. You'll give that eternal life now. You'll give that salvation now. I will give you rest. I'm going to pray with you now. Keep on standing up. As we pray. And you make this your prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling everyone. And everyone who responds, who comes to Christ, you will not push away or send away. So, Lord, I pray that all these who have come and they come for new life in Christ and they come for salvation in Christ, they come for rest and restoration through Christ. Lord, forgive their sins change their lives turn them around and give them transformation that the past life will be forgiven and forgotten and the new life that you have given will be visible in every life in Jesus name Give them the grace. Give them the strength to now live in newness of life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep on standing. The counselors are there. They want to put it on record that today you received eternal life, salvation, abundant life through Christ. We call on a national overseer in Togo here to lead us in this session of counseling. Don't go home yet. I'll come back to pray for your healing. Today is the date of your miracle and healing.
you are welcome into the family of God. The counselor are with you there. You relieve the sleep from them and you, you feel it. You will put your name and you put it in capital letters so that we can read it very well. You put no, your phone number. You feel it according to what is written there. You just feel it. There are places you will just tick it. Do it quickly. The counselors, please help them. You are now a member of the family of God. Do it quickly. Counselors, please help them. At the far, far back. To the French class everywhere. Counselor, please, if you finish, you let me know. You just make sign, then we know. Those who are online, you will see the number on your screen. You click that number and then you will feel the sleep online. You submit the sleep to the supervisors. No, the counselor will submit to the supervisors. You can do quick so that the pastor will come and pray for the sick. Counselors, do quick, do quick, be fast. At my right, have you finished? If you are finished, can you can you let me know? 
Just shake your flag there, then let me know. Okay. In the middle here, have you finished? Hurry up, hurry up. If I didn't, you are At the far back, you go to the far back. Help them, help them quickly. At my left, can you wave your this is I see? Counselor, we are waiting. You feel the paper. Those that cannot feel it, help them to feel it. You feel it properly. It will help us to come to you later and help you. For you to grow. Yes, let me know if you are finished. In the French class, We are still waiting. You submit the sleep to the supervisor. You don't go home with it. Feel it, feel it quickly. Counselor, help them. They should write their phone number. Very important.
if uh, you finish, you stay with them very soon. Pastor is coming to pray. You stay with the people that are sick. Counselor, we are waiting. Do quick. Go to the far back. Go to the French class. Listen to me very well. Tomorrow here, those who are giving their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now born again. Tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock, here, we have lunch with Christ. Launch with Jesus Christ. Here on this, uh, this place. All that have given their life to Lord Jesus Christ, you come here tomorrow, two o'clock. For lunch with Jesus Christ. Yes, counselor, we are still waiting. Have you finished? Have you finished? Yes, over there is finished. I, okay, at the back is finished. What of here? At my left hand, it's finished? It's okay. Now, uh, you will still be praying. Pastor is coming now. Stay with the people that are sick. Stay with them. You can stand up. Pastor is coming to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. Your time for healing and miracle, that time has now come. He calls you into miracle. Calls you into healing. He calls you into the manifestation of his power. Faithfully see that calls you. Who also will do it. You don't need to wait for another person. You catch your miracle, your healing, when you hear that final amen. If you are lame, you just rise up, you begin to walk. 
you are blind you open your eyes you will see any problem you have the lord is by your side taking that problem away right now final amen finish raise up raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge you will do it are you ready we're praying now lay your hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand father our god the father of our lord jesus christ we know you are here already lord jesus our savior our healer we know that you are here with all your power holy spirit with power divine we know you are right there by everyone here and online we're asking lord that that power that never fails will touch transform heal deliver everyone now in jesus name lord let there be manifestation of your power a performance of your promise you are the giver we are the receivers let everyone receive right now in jesus name that pain in your body i command come out in jesus name every form of sickness the pile you're healed sleepless nights you're healed high blood pressure healed tuberculosis healed nightmares evil spirits tormenting your head and your life be delivered in jesus name <laughs> cancer be healed in jesus name all those cancer cells dry up now in jesus name HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus name Ulcer be healed in Jesus name And that hernia be removed right now in Jesus name The breathing problem you are healed in Jesus name insanity and madness i command that evil spirit come out in jesus name <laughs> elephantiasis or any other swelling in your body i take authority over you be healed in jesus name any curse that have been following you i break that yoke i stop that curse you are delivered in jesus name lord manifest your faithfulness to everyone right now healing for everyone deliverance for everyone miracles for everyone you are faithful god you will do it 
you have done it we have received lord touch everyone with a touch of miracle it is done it is done you are healed you are delivered in jesus name i pray amen, amen. check up yourself now check up check up yourself don't wait for another person everyone who accepts the faithful sin always receives a miracle check out and when you see the miracle let there be a shout of joy 